Good morning, Lionhearts. Your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you today? Awesome. Well, we got a lot to do today. We got to pack a bag. We got to go do a vlog. We got to get some affairs in order. Get ourselves out and about, having fun. One last day in Hollywood, and we are taking off. Well, we're taking off late, late tonight. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. You know me, I like to travel minimalist, so I got my clothes in my backpack. I'm only going to take a backpack. And then I have all my camera stuff. This is my, um, this bag right here is my waterproof day bag. I just kind of throw just the stuff I need for the day and that while I'm out and about. Got my jacket ready, my toiletries, all the uh, electronics and gadgetry you need to, uh, to go vlogging overseas. That thing has, uh, this blue thing, this pretty much has every adapter for any country you could go to. This is my card reader, um, chargers for batteries, all that stuff, extra camera, um, extended nice lens, passport, gotta have that. Gotta have a winter hat, because we don't know what it's gonna be like there. I hope it snows, but not too much. And then this, these are ingenious. These are bags I found out actually at Walmart. They're small enough that I can actually fit them right in the uh, the front pouch of this bag and take it with me. And then once I get there, when I buy souvenirs or whatever, I can open this up. And most airlines will let you take a carry-on and a personal bag. This is small enough when it opens up that you can fit a, a handful of stuff in it, but it's um, it'll still work and is considered one of those uh, travel bags or whatever. So. I think we're just about ready. See, it actually fits right in this front pocket, no problem. Takes up no space. Well, hello, gang. So what we're gonna do today is, uh, first I wanna go out and I want to go visit the cemetery of uh, Forest Lawn in Glendale. We haven't been there in a while because there's uh, someone who at one time was the largest actor at MGM. He uh, won two Oscars in a row one of which he was humiliated, he said, by his performance, and yet still won an Oscar. He's legendary. We're going to go see the grave of Spencer Tracy. Finish packing up everything, and tonight I'm actually going to the Magic Castle. Like I said a few days ago, I thought I was going then. I'm actually going tonight, and then late, late tonight, I will uh, hop on a plane and take off out of here. Days with Jordan the Lion begins again now. Here you can see a lot of family members have been out paying their respects and putting some holiday decorations up for Christmas. Now Spencer Tracy was maybe one of the most talented actors to ever grace the screen and yet he was also one of the most sensitive, one of the most hard to understand, one of the most plagued by demons and he just never seemed to be able to get over that. Well, here in Forest Lawn, Glendale, and the Court of Freedom is the final resting place of Spencer Tracy. And I believe the reason that he's buried here is because he served in the war, served in World War I. Now, sadly, it's during this time when he joined the Navy that his night terrors would start. He was a lifelong insomniac, and they say that they actually started during the war but not because of the war, because of a decision he made. Now if you go in here into the Garden of Everlasting Peace, and you turn back to this corner, he's right back here. Like I said, Spencer Tracy was a hard man to understand. Now part of that was because he just never really ever felt that he had the support of his father. Much like many of these actor stories start, he was loved by his mother, but he always felt that he was his mother's favorite and that his brother was his father's. And so he was constantly getting in trouble as a kid. He would end up being thrown out of 15 grammar schools for fighting or just not going to school. And um, 
It wasn't until he joined a Jesuit school when he was 17 that his life started to change. He actually started to um, think of the idea of going into becoming a priest, joining a seminary. And that was actually an idea that his father was really in support of. However, World War I broke out and he decided to leave the school, join the military, and go fight. And it was, they said at this point that he started having these night terrors that he was always plagued with because he was regretting not going into the seminary. And once he got out, he enrolled in a college and did that for a very short time, but it was actually there that one of the teachers encouraged him to try out for one of the school plays and they found out that he was kind of a natural. It wasn't so much that he spent his time watching movies or always wanted to be an actor. He just was really good at memorizing the script and he just seemed to be effortless when he was on stage. So he left there after a year and started to attend the uh, American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. And this is where the Spencer Tracer that we end up all coming to know kind of was born. You see it's during this time when he was studying and doing stock company theater um, that he would start drinking pretty heavily. And that would become a, um, something that would plague him his whole life as well. Um, he just started drinking a lot and started um, attend going to a lot of brothels. And they said that a lot of the drinking came from his father, like the Irish side of his family. That's just what he saw his father always do was go drinking and drink hard. And being a young actor, that was something that they always kind of like prided themselves on, how much they could drink and still perform. So he did this for a couple of years. And on one of those stock company um, road trips, he met a woman who was also an actress. By the end of their tour there, they had fallen in love and they had gotten married. Now. He would remain married to her for the rest of his life, even though many people would know him as being famous for, well not famous for, but um, making nine movies with Katherine Hepburn, and they've always kind of went down in history as one of these great Hollywood couples, which they were a Hollywood couple for 25 years while Spencer Tracy was married. Now a lot of things happened in Spencer's life that would be good and bad, and one of those things that happened that kind of sent his life in a bit of a different direction was he and his wife had a son and he ended up naming his son after his father and they realized just shy of a year old that his son John was deaf and Spencer ended up taking this so hard he actually blamed himself because he said that um, or what at least what friends have said was that he believed him frequenting prostitutes so often and contracting um, venereal diseases had caused that to happen and they said um, he would take off and hole himself up in an apartment or like a hotel room for days and nobody could find him um, just getting drunk and falling into these stupors and his wife you know as troubled as their marriage was she uh, was a Catholic just like him and um, they believed you know once you were married you were always married and she also saw that um, this disability that they found their son had could be something that she could work on she was no longer an actress um, she was taking care of the baby but she also saw that there was a way she was completely dedicated to finding a way for their son to be able to speak and hear just like any other child and eventually later on down the line she would found an organization that would work on that and actually use Spencer's name to help the fundraising. Now Spencer's big break basically happened in 1930. He had been doing the stock company theater productions as well as sometimes getting on Broadway not really having a ton of success but his wife encouraged him saying you're really great at this please don't give up so for seven years while they were married he would work on this till he would finally do a theater production on Broadway that the great director John Ford would see he liked him so much that he actually came and attended the performance four nights in a row and then took Spencer off and put him in a movie that John was directing starring Humphrey Bogart now the movie was such a success that it ended up getting Spencer Tracy a, uh, a deal with Fox Studios and Fox would end up for the next like two years using him for like almost 25 pictures playing like a heavy, like a tough guy, 
which is not what really we would come to know Spencer Tracy's style as being. Now while being married and having this new career success, the family had moved out to Los Angeles and they had decided to have a second child. And so they had a daughter and shortly after she came around, the um, decision was made for Spencer and his wife to separate. Not get a divorce, but they would separate. And Spencer would continue to drink heavily and uh, womanize. And this became kind of well known. He started um, getting into bar fights, getting thrown out for trashing hotels, various things. So when his contract was about to end, Irving Thalberg over at MGM borrowed him for a movie. Um, when he saw how great of an actor Spencer was, he tried to lure him away with a five-year contract for MGM, um, which was kind of difficult because Louis B. Mayer hated that kind of behavior and had a staunch policy on um, when you signed with MGM that there was no um, fraternizing or anything that basically could get you could happen that would be reported in the public that could give MGM a, a black eye, you would be fired. So Spencer Tracy would end up signing over there, but once he and his wife um, got a little bit of the success, they decided, like I said, to separate, and he started having an affair with one of his co-stars, um, <laughs> and next thing you know, she was in love with him. So he would start filming a movie with Loretta Young, and Loretta Young also being Catholic, um, she fell in love with him before she knew he was married. And then she said, once she realized he was married, they realized this can't happen, we can't be together. And, but she said for two years they would try and break it off, that, that he was just that um, interesting and alluring that she couldn't, she couldn't get away. And that's something that Spencer Tracy would end up being known for, just this allure to women that, um, he was your everyday man, but he was firm and he was sensitive and there was just something that everybody liked about him. And so he ended up getting put, uh, once he went to MGM, um, which was kind of good for him because like I said, he was always going to, um, he was getting into fights and going to brothels and things like that. And MGM had a real tight stranglehold on the media at that time, basically saying, if you report this, these kinds of things, we'll never let you on the lot again. And so during that time, they just wouldn't report things like this and MGM could kind of clean it up before it got out. Um, but Spencer Tracy was put in a movie that he didn't necessarily want to do because he was playing a Portuguese fisherman, which would entail ha him having a wig and wearing makeup and speaking in an accent, which were all things that he just said he hated. And when I watched the movie, I thought he actually reminded me of Chico Marx, his accent, but he said he didn't really know how to do that accent. And so he ended up doing something that was Yiddish and was pretty embarrassed by it until he was nominated for an Oscar in 1937 and then won it. But he couldn't attend the ceremony because he was in the hospital for a, um, I guess he had some sort of hernia operation, and so his wife ended up going up and uh, receiving the award for him. Now, one of MGM's great ideas to help build up Spencer Tracy's star was to co-star him or uh, make him a um, side star to Clark Gable, which ended up being great because Clark Gable could hold his own. Um, obviously, he was a huge star at that time, and Spencer Tracy, when he came around, he showed that he could um, match up and be just as good as Clark Gable. So he ended up starting to get, after like three movies with Clark Gable, he started getting a lot of uh, feature roles, and the next year he would win, after 1937, the very next year he would be put in Boys Town, um, the movie, and win an Oscar for that. So he won two Oscars in two years. Now they say that doing Boys Town was a bit of a problem for him because, like I said, he wanted to be a priest at one point and had some guilt about not doing it. But also Father Flanagan, who he was set to portray, was such a monumental and beloved man, he almost thought, you know, with my lifestyle, I have no business portraying this man or, um, or, or even being in the picture. And they said that was something that Spencer Tracy would kind of be known for most of his career. Right before a production would start, he would have second thoughts and threaten to quit the picture unless they said, hey, we're gonna sue you or something like that. So he ended up winning the Oscar, giving the Oscar to Father Flanagan himself and, um, went on to be nominated for a total of nine Academy Awards, one of which being for The Man Who Came to Dinner, 
which was the last thing that he filmed. He actually died, um, I believe, 17 days after production was wrapped and was nominated for an Oscar um, for that following year for that movie. He didn't win, but Katherine Hepburn was in it with him, and she did win, and she said that she thought that that Oscar that she won was um, actually Spencer's Oscar, that he deserved it. And she had spent the most of her life knowing him taking care of him, so it wasn't a surprise that she would say something like that. And so, yes, even though Spencer Tracy was known for having his faults, um, and he was dating, you know, during the, the 30s when he wasn't um, still living with his wife, they would occasionally try and get back together and try and make it work, and it would just never happen. He would um, be dating... Um, who Ingrid Bergman he was attached to at that time, also Joan Crawford. But in 1942, when he worked with Katherine Hepburn, that's where it all changed. She, um, she was trying to make a follow-up picture to Philadelphia Story and um, was doing Woman of the Year, and he was cast in the movie. She immediately fell in love with his personality, his style, even his moody quirks, and they were pretty much inseparable for the next 25 years, though it was not public knowledge for most of that time. Like I said, he was married, but um, his wife and Catherine became friends and would often work together, especially the later years of Spencer's life when his health would be failing. Um, they would both come and attend to him, and when he finally ended up passing away, his wife did all the arrangements for the funeral, and Catherine didn't attend because she said she thought it would be in poor taste. So eventually, after making a ton of great movies at MGM, his contract would end. They would not renew him because he was getting old. And um, a lot of times at this point, people would fall into depressions, but he was already pretty much depressed and moody um, his whole life. So this was nothing new. Um, but he was now independent and had to start looking for his own pictures. But Katherine Hepburn said it was pretty sad when his uh, contract was up and he made his last picture for MGM. She said when he finally, um, actually his contract had ended and then they signed him on for one last picture and when he went to make the picture it was so hot where they were filming it that he, uh, he demanded they change the venue of where they were gonna film that and finally the studio just said, you're fired. They replaced him and um, they said when he left after all the money he made, he was the top star at MGM for many years Nobody that worked there said goodbye to him except for the security guard on his way out. But have no fear, Spencer Tracy's career was not completely over. Though he would work independent and have very little success at first, he and Katherine Hepburn would end up making movies again, and they had this amazing on-screen chemistry, and he was one of the few actors at that point that realized, hey, I'm not a leading man anymore, so he stepped into the father roles. He was willing to do those kind of parts, and it was eventually the director, Stanley Kramer, um, who, when Spencer basically said, hey, um, he was making a movie with John Ford. He basically said, John Ford's the man who brought me in. Maybe I'll just retire after this picture. It was actually Stanley Kramer who said, don't retire, and put him in movies all the way up until Spencer died. Basically, Spencer worked only for Stanley Kramer at the end and um, had a succession of hits. Spencer Tracy would often have bouts of sobriety, um, but I think that was partially what ended up being harmful to him was that he would um, be sober and then fall off the wagon. Then he'd be back on the wagon, then he'd fall off the wagon again. And um, it just took a lot of strain onto his heart and um, yeah eventually at a very young age he was only in his mid 60s um, he woke up in the house that he and Catherine Hepburn were living in in the middle of the night much like he always did she even wrote a letter um, talking about how he would just always have these restless nights always like shuffling his pillow always like tossing and turning um, the last night he woke up to go make some tea and she found him uh, dead on the floor, which she said um, she was kind of relieved by because she said it was a much more dignified end and much more of what he deserved than to uh, kind of like struggle along and his health to keep failing and eventually like diminishing away. For the last few years of Spencer Tracy's life, Katherine Hepburn completely devoted herself to him and pretty much resigned from acting during that time because she said it was uh, 
she always saw him as the greatest actor alive and she thought it was just an extreme honor to get to help him in his time of need and she said she more than anyone else uh, understood him even though no one ever could because he would never open up he would never tell what his problems were she just always knew how tortured he was and um, always just understood his moodiness and loved him and one of my personal recommendations for a Spencer Tracy movie that I just can't get enough of is called Libeled Lady starring Myrna Loy, Spencer Tracy, Gene Harlow, and William Powell. Fantastic movie. And thank you for your service. One of the truly sad things that I did read about Spencer Tracy was they said at the end of his life he had many regrets, most of which being he never felt like he gave his family enough. He would see them on the weekends, but he just, he said he felt like he was never truly there for them. And uh, people on sets, like the young kids that he would work with would say, he would immediately develop a relationship with them, like a friendship, almost like a second father type relationship, where he would treat them like they were his kids. So I think it's time for us to head out of here. Well, just in time, I went and got my mail and had something from Merch 5 that I wanted to take on this trip with me, so nothing like getting it to me right, <laughs> right at the finish line, right at the buzzer. Well, first off, it's a new beanie. I recognize those shades. Oh, awesome. It's the shirt for our new trip. Like I said, Merch 5 wanted to do like limited edition shirts for every time we took a voyage anywhere and this one if you can read in the middle it says Prague travel vlogs in Prague begin now I love this they did a great job the artist look at this he incorporated some of the Franz Kafka imagery he's a uh, well-known Czech Prague novelist short story writer always had imagery of tentacles and cockroaches and things like that love how he added that to it and then you have the city square up here and the Charles Bridge looks great all right so I'm ready to go I'm all dressed up they have a dress code at the Magic Castle and tonight is the night that I was invited to go to the Magic Castle we thought it was last week and then I got all ready and got a text saying oh my gosh I'm sorry man it's next week so tonight's the night I'm actually going with Scott Michaels from Dearly Departed Museum so he's picking me up now and uh Always a fun night at the Magic Castle. I can't wait to see what's going on, especially for Christmas time. Looks great. It's all decked out for Christmas. Look at that. <whistles> Scott was just telling me he had heard a rumor that this was uh, the fountain from the old William Desmond Taylor murder estate. Well, my friends, I think we're going to call it a night here. That was a great night with Scott Michaels out at the Magic Castle, but I got a big day tomorrow. I want to send a big shout out, thank you, to Tanya Sumner and Jeff Remily, and hope you guys enjoyed getting to go visit Spencer Tracy's grave today, as well as seeing a little bit of the outside of the Magic Castle. As you know, they don't allow filming inside, so couldn't do much about that, but Come back and see me tomorrow. We are, like I said, taking off on an adventure, and you won't want to miss the start. Have a great night, everyone, and goodbye.